ambulance services a patient breathing. He's not breathing! 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 More than 3,000 a day in the West Midlands. Right, stop screaming and listen to me. Listen, don't be afraid to push too hard. One and two and three. One and two. CPR in progress. Everyone clear? Each call tells the story of a person in desperate need. You upgraded to a red place who's been badly beaten. Do you know what it was you were stabbed with, Dom? And with call numbers doubling in the last decade. Go in his head! Yeah. I can't. You can. For our public services, a situation that is now critical. They've got to find somewhere for them. They can't just say there's no beds. Is this literally what you've got? What you're standing up in? Got nothing else? Okay. The failure of the system. Oh God. Oh, oh my God. What was he doing? Hey. All right, guys. Just, just one minute. Cameras follow cases as they unfold, minute by minute. Two ambulances, please, if possible. OK, yeah, as long as you're all right, I'll get everybody to use quick as I can. In the control room... Confirmed life extinct. Oh, man. ..and on the ground... Sorry for your loss. ..as the West Midlands Ambulance Service race to save lives. They are coming to you, blue lights and sirens, as fast as they possibly can. If you're breathing... Can you see the helicopter? Well, you're no trouble, honestly. Everybody needs help sometimes, don't they? This is the story behind the sirens. <laughs> Get out of the way. I'm driving. Well, then, sir, this is the patient breathing. Uh, yes, but she's gasping. Um, We're on the way to you. I'm going to stay on the phone until we get there, OK? Can you talk to me? Talk to me? Talk to me? Talk to me? Is she struggling to breathe at the moment? Uh, 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 breathing is struggling. I'm covered in blood and she is. OK, is she awake at the moment? No. She's not? No. OK, we are on the way. I need you to keep the line open for me until we get there. Oh, come on. The man has called 999 because his wife has fallen downstairs and is struggling to breathe. It's a Category 1 emergency, the highest priority, so two West Midlands ambulance crews are immediately dispatched. The patient, Lily, will need to be taken quickly to a trauma centre. It's 24 miles by road, and a helicopter can make the journey much faster. But first, it needs to get to the scene. The closest available air ambulance crew with a doctor on board is Helimed 03. Helimed 03, we've now lifted the top of the British doctor. The land crew are still nine minutes away. The patient's condition is worsening. Is she taking a full breath in now? No. No, she's not. Right, no. do you need help on how to give her basic life support until we get there? Um, go on, tell me, just tell me what to do. Kneel by her side. Yes. Okay, put the heel of your hand in the centre of her chest and there's her hand on top of it. Press down on her chest at least five to six centimetres. Don't be afraid to push too hard. You need to do this at a rate of one and two and three. And one and two and three. One, two, three. Lily. One, two, three. Lily, come on. 48 miles from Lily in South Birmingham, three crews are at the scene of a serious motorbike collision. Hi, uh, it's Faye on the trauma desk. Yeah, motorbike is there. It's car. It's got well, right side open. Clean up picture. Yeah. Yeah. I need the media back up and help the beat. 4317, thank you. That's received. We're struggling with a doctor at the moment. We'll try and get somebody to you, but there's just no one available at the moment ever. Faye is coordinating the only two air ambulance doctors on duty today. 
One is taking a patient into hospital and the other, Helimed 03, is en route to Lily. If you want me to turn round three, I will turn them round. You're trying to see which patient is the poorest, which patient is going to benefit the most from the helicopter. Logistically, it's a real challenge. I potentially got someone's life in my hands when I have to make a decision. And at the same time, more jobs are coming in. Leave, leave three, you talk to it. They need to resign. The decision is taken to keep Helimed 03 running to Lily. The other air ambulance doctor on duty has just become available for the motorbike crash. They're clear and heading back. Can I ask them to go? I might be. Hang on. Helimed 5-3. Would you be able to assist us with a job in Yardley Wood, please, over? That's an affirmative, over. It's taken Helimed 03 12 minutes to reach Lily. The two land crews are already on scene. Hello. All right, so this is a 79 year old female. Yep. She's fallen down an unknown number of stairs. Yep. Just head injury. Hello. Back to the head. We were told she, she stopped breathing. Family yep. had done CPR prior to our arrival. Okay. Lily's husband, Cliff, performed CPR for nine minutes before the first crew arrived and was able to get her breathing again. Lillian. Hello there. Can you hold my hand? If we could. Well done, sweetheart. Before Lily can fly, the doctor must put her into an induced coma to assist with her breathing. What we're going to do is um, get our kit ready, because uh, we're going to give her an anaesthetic uh, to make sure we can take over her breathing and keep everything safe, and we'll then fly her to Stoke. All right, there. It's all right. Hello there, it's Midlands Air Ambulance. Uh, we bring in a patient in two, you please, this trauma. It's not just a job. Once you're a paramedic, it does get into your blood. OK, so if we switch that on so it's ventilating, yeah? These are somebody's mother, they are somebody's daughter, father, son. So, you know, you're not only treating them, you're actually treating their families as well. They're on the way over now. Can I just confirm, just before we... So it's, it's Lillian, is it? No, Lily, L-I-L-Y. OK, and no other surgical procedures, anything like that? You think no, she had a very really bad fall, but what happened since then, uh, her balance and her coordination has been terrible. OK. What did you know they put the fall down to? Or? It was just one of those things. She was bringing something out of the oven, and her heel hit the carpet to the back of her head at the handle of the hostess trolley. Okay. Well, she's asleep at the moment, so she won't, she won't know anything. Okay. All right. You're that. very welcome. Thank you very much. OK. So if we take a little bit of a wide loop round, so we sort of straight to aim at the uh, stretcher. As there is no room for family members in the helicopter, Cliff must make the journey by car. Helimed 03 will convey Lily to the trauma center in Stoke. The ambulance service calls on the Midlands Air Ambulance Charity an average of five times a day. Are there any loose animals at that property? Cats or dogs? Parrots? They are coming to you, blue lights and sirens, as fast as they possibly can. Do you feel desperately ill? You really don't feel well at all? Send the ambulance. Send the ambulance. Sir, please. Hello? The public don't realise how busy we actually are. Hello? We do have a lot of life-threatening emergencies. They think that they're going to call us, we're going to come out, resolve them, and that we're waiting around every corner, but obviously we're not. 
What's he doing? Oh, he's picking dogs up. No way. Yeah. From the lamppost. Just don't acknowledge it. Don't acknowledge it. Get the number plate. Red Micra. Wow, amazing. Hello there. I'm actually a paramedic on duty at the moment. We've just seen what we think was a drug pickup. No, very small, very small bag. Um, but basically, if I can give you the registration number of the vehicle. Grandmothers Helen and Julie have together clocked up 34 years with the ambulance service. Thank you. OK, bye bye, bye bye. Oh, look, it's got a, got a hole in there. It's got a hole in there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Bastards. I know. Well, they didn't expect us to be watching that then, did no. they? No. Helen and Julie have just booked on for the night shift in Stoke and are available for their first job. Oh, it's uh, the police here. Uh, OK. We've got a 17-year-old male. He's conscious and breathing. He's got facial injuries. He's been hit in the face. So was it assault, was it? Yeah, it looks like it, yeah. OK. Four nine. Four nine, thank you. I've got notes coming through. Armed officers are on scene. Assailant believed to have left the scene. Going out to a 17 year old male. Received her. Yeah, Roger, thank you. All received. Armed officers? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Please don't let this be the tone for the rest of the night. What's been happening? Been punched once, knocked to the ground, been lying on the floor there for about 20 minutes complaining of jaw pain. Okay. And he has spat some blood out. Can we take your hood down? Can I have a look at your face, matey? Mm -hmm. You're cold? Well, shall we get you on the ambulance then? Because I need to have a look at whether you've got an injury there, if you're complaining of some pain in your jaw, yeah? Come on then, mate. Can we get inside where it's warm? Have you got any pain anywhere else, mate? Mm -hmm. No? Okay. Okay, come and have a seat on here. Let's move some of these things out of the way. So was it just the one punch to the face? Two. Two punches to the face, OK. How is your vision at the moment? Can you see everything OK? Oh, oh no. Can you just look straight ahead at the police officers? I just want to shine this light in your eye, OK? You've got a headache at all? Oh. Why is the threes and very sluggish, Alan? Oh, very. Thanks, Can you move your jaw? Can you open your mouth for me like this? Just open and close. Does that hurt? Oh. OK. OK, what's your home address, love? Um, You're homeless. Where have you been staying recently? No, I was asleep You're not very well dressed for being outside. Have you got no other clothes with you? No. All right, matey. We've got restricted movement on his jaw. It's quite swollen. He, he needs an x-ray, really, yeah. yeah. OK, if you can think of anyone who's done it, give us a ring. We'll Thank you. you Thanks, Thanks guys. guys. Guys, has he been OK with you? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, fine. No well problem. Floor, yeah, yeah, OK. Yeah, so did he report it? Was somebody else reported somebody it? Somebody else. He was just lying in the road. He wouldn't move for a bit. OK. Because he said his cheek was hurting. Really OK. Well, and then he's yeah, gotten up when you've spoken to yeah. him. Yeah, thank you. No See you later. So you've been on the streets before, or is this, is this the first time you've been out there? <laughs> right. OK. So what was the plan for tonight? Were you going to be out tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's been really cold today, never mind at night. OK, matey. Scratch. OK, Julie. OK. The 17-year-old patient may have broken his jaw, so he'll be taken to the nearest hospital. He's really young to be out there, matey, aren't you? It's not a particularly nice street to be in. We've had a few jobs down here just recently and they've involved the police every time because it's just not nice. Is this literally what you've got, what you're standing up in? Mm. Yeah. Got nothing else? Mm. OK. Unless you've worked this job, you don't realise the level of society that's vulnerable. 
to see teenagers who are no fixed abode is heartbreaking. That's become so much more prevalent in the last few years. All you want to do is sort of, I don't know, bubble wrap them. In the West Midlands, homelessness has risen by 55% in the last two years. We'll get this jaw looked at, OK? And I'll see what I can do with uh, making a couple of phone calls while I get you booked in, yeah? And then hopefully there won't be any more nights on the street. Okay, sweetheart, just round that little bit to the front of Amy. Grab hold of your trousers, mate, because you're losing <laughs> them. The skinny jeans and they're disappearing. <laughs> if us as an ambulance service doesn't try and care, who's going to? Because other agencies haven't got the resources, obviously, to be a 24-7 service like we are. It's so cold already. I'll put the heating on. Okay, thanks, mate. It's jolly cold. Whilst the patient waits in A&E, Helen calls a local homeless charity. Hi, guys. My name's Helen Davis. I'm a paramedic with the ambulance service. Currently at Royal Stoke, after bringing a young male who's sleeping rough in, he has no plan B for tonight. He's been assaulted in the street. I could do with somebody touching base with him before he leaves the hospital. If somebody could give me a call back, that would be great. So is it just an answer phone then? Yeah, answer phone, and then hopefully somebody will get back to us. It probably just means they're already out and about checking on um, local area. The trouble is, you, you know, you, you can only do what you can do because you, you don't know the circumstances, do you? The thing is, he could have been a nightmare at home. He could have been thrown out of every school he's ever been in and the parents could have just have... Or then again, the parents could actually be looking for him now because he's done one. He perhaps doesn't want to be found. No. Who knows? No. Who knows? But it is jolly cold tonight. It says mm. It's down to five degrees and he hasn't even got a proper coat. No. No. He's got no waterproof, no sleeping bag, no nothing, has he? No phone. No. That makes him ultra vulnerable. Yeah. But, yeah, you do, you do sort of go into mum mode. Mm. You, you do go the, the, the caring mode, and you think, yeah. you know, that could be my son and yeah. I, I might be looking for them. You just don't know what's happened. That's the problem. Your, your sons are angelic compared to mine. <laughs> um, I haven't spoken to my son for three years. I don't know where my son is tonight. He's yeah. making choices somewhere, but that doesn't start you hurting, does it? He's been in the back of an ambulance more times than enough, but I have to hope that, you know, he's, he, we've gone beyond that stage. OK. OK, OK. Ready to clear? Ready. Yeah, ready when you are. I don't know why we have this standoff. He's not always avoided the things I've wanted him to avoid. He's not always avoided the people I've wanted him to avoid. Hell-bent on self-destruction is how it seemed. I think his choice is that I'm not in his life at this moment in time. So I have to go with that. Forty-five miles southeast in Tamworth, paramedic crew Ben and Sophie are on the first job of their shift. I love these evenings. Yeah, I was just had to say that. Oh, I love the light nights. Oh. Hello, Paul. Wow. That was a big one. Drive in. <laughs> a 77-year-old at an assisted living flat has pressed her personal emergency alarm. I haven't seen any numbers yet. Laundry. There we go. Hello there. Hello, my darling. I'm Ben, and this is Sophie. I'm so So what's happened this evening? No, tell, let me tell you what happened. Go on. Yeah, of course you can. This, this, uh, 
Your, your pendant. Your pendant. My pendant ring from the song. Oh, does oh. it? Did you hear the no. lady asking if you're OK? Oh, she did ask me if I was OK. I said no, because I have a lot of pain, And darling. that's why they rang for the pain. I have a lot of pain. Where oh. do you get the pains? It's here. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's the size of my stomach. Oh, bless you. Do you know the reason why your, your tummy is enlarged? You've I got a stone, have. haven't you? Yeah, I have a, a stone as big a as a boulder. A gallbladder, a gallbladder, a gallstone. It's on top okay. of the pancreatic gland, which right. is worse. OK. I asked for the doctor today. OK. But they declined to come. I think that the ambulance service is the best there is in the whole world. <laughs> oh, bless you. We try our best. So, your normal pain, out of ten, what would you put it at? I would say nine. Nine. So that's your normal pain. OK. And how much pain are you in now, out of ten? I would say I was something like a seven. OK, so it's better. It's easier yeah. than your normal it's pain. Easier, yes. OK, good, good. Yeah. How long have you lived here for? 18 years. Have you? Yes. And do you like it here, Maria? Yes, I like it very much. Yeah? Do you have any family, Maria? No family here, darling. No family here? All in America. Are they? America. Nine grandchildren and one wow. great-grandchild. I bet you've got some memories. And yes, I do. You've got good care staff here, haven't you, that took the look yes. after you? That's good. Well, Maria, everything's checking out absolutely fine. You see, I told you I would be fine. <laughs> With Maria's observations giving no cause for concern, the crew decide there is no need for her to go to hospital. Thank you very much. You're very kind, sweetheart. Oh, no problem at all. I'm sorry that I have to have to... Don't yeah. apologise. It's oh, fine. No. <laughs> it's OK. If you put your mind at rest, then, uh, then we've done our job today. OK, Maria, you take care. Thank Lovely you, to darling. see you again. Lovely to see you. All right, and you take care of yourself. Thank you, darling. Pleasure. Take care, sweetheart. You. You're welcome. No, Look okay. after yourself. I will, my darling. <laughs> I think I've been to her a couple of times before. I love people like that. But isn't it lovely how people are so grateful? Yeah. She was so... She was, she was. Ben and Sophie's case is the 117th call the West Midlands Ambulance Service has responded to so far tonight. I'm not sure whether these patients are the same. One's got no top on, one's got no shoes and socks on. The bus station? Yeah, <laughs> one's outside the fire station. So if it's the same patient, all is wearing his trousers? <laughs> Let's hope he's wearing trousers. Wait for the third call to yeah. say there's someone there with the trousers now removed on. his trousers. <laughs> Over the last hour, Ambulance Control has taken 161 emergency calls. Ambulance service, is a patient breathing? No! <laughs> What's going on? The baby stop breathing, please, and Right, OK, calm down. I'm going to start doing this in the show. It's why I'm driving the risk. OK, are the attackers there on scene? I don't care about the attackers, but please just bring an ambulance, please. Ambulance service, is a patient breathing? No, I don't excuse. Oh, I want to stay alive. In Stafford, a 999 call from a telephone box is in progress. Oh, my God, I'm OK, and how old is the patient? A child? Yes. He's hanging himself from the lamppost. Hanging from the lamppost? Lamppost in the car park? Jeez. Can you start making Sainsbury's on Shaw Road and Stafford, please? Um, got a couple of crews on routes there. It's coming through as a hanging over, 15-year-old. Two ambulance crews are four minutes away from the reported hanging, and a paramedic officer is just behind them. Because of the seriousness of the call, the Merritt crew, who specialise in major trauma, are sent on blue lights. They're the only crew with a doctor and critical care paramedic on duty at the moment. They're currently 27 miles away. Is 
Tom is coordinating the Merrick car from the control room tonight. He's coming from the telephone box. Oh, is it? Oh, cost one, just make you aware. This is coming out of the telephone box. So, um, yeah. We're going to get some more information. But yeah, proceed as you can. Many thanks. Nowadays, as most people have got mobile phones, that makes it a little suspicious um, that it may be a home call. With the trauma team still 20 miles away, the first ambulance arrives on scene and reports back to the control room. 81. 81, have you made contact with the patient or have you got any clinical update at all? Yeah, we're not actually sure where the patient is at the moment. Uh, we're struggling on location, so we're having a good search of the area. 226. Is it not a newspaper there? Yeah, it's engaged. Earl Street, where that telephone box is pulling. You, won't, you can't see Sainsbury's car park from there. If there was somebody hanging from a lamppost, everyone and his dog would have run, wouldn't they? Mm, I think this is loaded. I think it's, it's... Baloney. I think it is as well. I'm just looking I would swear. So at the moment, there's now going to be four ambulances or four ambulance resources there, so... It's going to be quite frustrating for everyone, I think. With no sign of a patient, Tom calls the phone box again. Nine eight, hi, Gavin. It's Tom. Um, I've stood you down on this case. I've just called the telephone office to recognise us to answer. We've got two crews in attendance and an officer. They can't see the patient. OK, Roger, many thanks. We stood down. Come and take it. Waste. On average, hoax calls cost West Midlands Ambulance Service nearly a quarter of a million pounds a year. No, no, hi, Gavin. So I moved you on to this, uh, this second call just because it's come through as a Cat 1. Um, stabbing under the arm, four inches long. Um, that's all I know at the moment. <laughs> Thank you very much. The total cost of responding to this call is estimated at £1,500. <laughs> 90 minutes into their shift, Helen and Julie are still awaiting their second job and are on their way to a standby point. We have a little boy for the weekend. He is arriving tomorrow after school. Ah. <laughs> he has How one. will you he sleep? Has, he, I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, he's one got only got back from school. Hi, Nana. <laughs> Says, hello, Charlie. <laughs> oh, bless. I mean, I, don't, I won't sleep long Saturday anyway, four no. hours, so I'll, I'll be up, so hope... He's here. No, he's walked out. He's walked he's out. Walked out. Well, he, def he definitely hasn't. I'll, uh, I'll go round the corner, lovely. Sweetheart, I managed to make a phone call to the guys, the rough sleepers, and what I wanted to do was for them to come to the hospital to contact you, cos I'm bothered about where you're going to be tonight. But you need to get this jaw looked at. Where are you going to go tonight? Mm. Why don't you let us take take you back down to the hospital and we'll get one of these? Yeah, but you're going to be at least you're in the warm while you're being looked at, aren't you? No. Where are you going to go? Try and get me from Blackwood to Hamley. I don't even know where I'm going. Do you want us to take you to the hostel? Yeah, yeah. yeah? OK. Right, OK. What, we, what you're going to have to do is just come with us. Let me just have, have a word with Control, cos I let, need to let them know that we've, we're busy with you, OK, so we don't get another job. All right, mate? Hold on a second. Yeah, matey, um, can you book me on a running call? Um, the young man that we just took up to the unit has left the unit. Uh, we are concerned for his welfare tonight because he is an FA. We need to get this young man to um, Brighter Futures in Hope Street in Hamley just so that he's safe for tonight. Can you book me on that as a running call? 
Yeah, we'll do. Give us a couple of minutes. I'll just see if we can find the Thank you. Crew have just come across a chap that not long dropped off at hospital. He's left. He's discharged himself. No, it's the last patient was the 17 year old, wasn't he? So they just left him. Yeah. He's a child, really, still. At least they're putting him somewhere safe. With other crews free to respond to emergency calls, Helen and Julie are given permission to stick with their patient. We've got a duty of care to patients. Whether we were busy or not, we would still have to take him to a place of safety because it's not safe for a 17 year old to sleep out rough. How's your jaw feeling? Yeah, it will do, mate. Yeah, hopefully. If, if it is that it's worse in the morning, you're going to have to get it checked out, you know? OK. Well, I've been locked up today as well. You've been locked up? Yeah. What, by the police? Yeah. What's gone on today? There's obviously far more gone on. You've been... You've been involved in something in town? Yeah? Not the best day ever. Do you want to be able to go back home? When I got arrested, and they checked me in with that I was already down as a missing patient. Right, OK. So who's made you a missing person, your mum and dad? No? They're going to wonder where you are. They're going to do no more, is it? How do they know that you're all right? Because parents are good, but they're not that good. They can't work it out if they don't hear from you. Are you going to stay tonight? Yeah. I'm not spending 12 hours looking for you tonight, all right? right? Uh... You're not doing the entire shift with me, OK? <laughs> Over the last few years, jobs that take two hours, three hours, six hours are not unheard of. Let's wait for Julie to get the back down. You're going to hang on to a couple of these. When I first joined the service, you would never be on a job. Three hours trying to bring in other resources, other agencies to try and solve a social care or mental health problem. But that happens every day now. Come on. Do you not want any of them? You're not planning on staying out tonight, then? Alternative pathways have reduced and funding's been cut in other areas, and the workload is, is, is too big for the, the resources that are there. Come on. Hello. Go, let's How go are you in. doing? I know you've not rung. Can we ask well, you a favour? Can we have just have a word? <laughs> Come on, then, matey. Thank you. Whilst Helen and Julie look after their patient, a Category 1 call, the most critical of cases, is in progress. It's the fifth for a child the service has received in the last half an hour. My two-year-old daughter, uh -huh. she's woke up crying and it's like she's sitting. She's really scaring me. It's all right, don't worry. No, I know it's not very nice to see, but just keep, keep an eye on her for me. Let me know if anything changes before we arrive. Okay. okay. It's OK, it's OK. The help's already on the way to you. They're coming as fast as they can. OK. An ambulance is immediately dispatched, but they're 11 miles away, so the control room must find a closer crew. Whiskey Tango 12 vehicles, Category 1 call in Tamworth, and current ETA for a crew is 18 minutes. If anyone's close or able to clear or render aid, please call control. <laughs> She feels like really, really warm. She feels really warm. Yeah. Across Staffordshire, crews are currently busy treating five people with breathing difficulties, two suspected strokes, and one trauma case. But Ambulance 4453, Ben and Sophie, have just cleared from a job three miles away from the fitting toddler. 4453, we're available if you want to dispatch us onto this category one outstanding over. Thanks for claiming it for a female toddler that's fitting over. Just ahead. Okay. Turn around. Right or left? Left. Oh, 
Temperature first. Mm-hmm. All right. Thirty-eight, nine, thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Okay. So we're a little hot. Have we? Have she had any cold or anything? No. Okay. She's not allergic to anything that you know of. Okie dokie. Quite often with kiddies, the the part of the brain called the hypothalamus isn't fully formed until a later age. So they'll get really, really hot, and then they'll go into a seizure. All right, which is, it is quite common. <laughs> Don't worry, Mum. If we, if we panic, that's when you panic. All right. Pop you on here, eh? <laughs> there we go. Did you look after her? Did you? And she was shaking. She was she shaking. shaking. Oh. She's okay. Yeah. How old are you? Big. <laughs> big. You're big. <laughs> Do you like little sister? Yeah. Mm. Do you play a lot? Yeah. Yeah. And she gives me a cuddle. She gives you a cuddle? Oh, that's ah. nice. Cuddles are lovely. Ah. It was literally constant, like, non-stop. Was it? I found my mother-in-law at first, cos I, I didn't know what to do. And... I get OK. And then oh, she okay. said, like, you know, phone an ambulance and... <gasps> yeah. Bless her. I think, because this has never happened before, Probably wise that we take her up to the to the hospital. Where was she born? Uh, good Hope. Good Hope. Yeah. Are you happy? Are you happy wow. to come to Good Hope? Yeah. Mummy, see you in a bit. You'll be good for Daddy. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> what do you think of the ambulance, Liv? Is it big? Yeah. yeah. Nino, Nino. Are you happy, Ben? Yeah, thanks, Lovig. Bye. 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 Hello. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 What's this, Liv? Wow. Who's that? What is it? Hello, Olivia. Is it a chicken? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're taking that baby to hospital. Okay, thank you. Almost two hours into the shift, and the control room has received a further 162 emergency calls. 4451, drop a nine call, please, to be Enchanted Village. The CFR is on scene and calling it through. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? I'm not sure. I'm just, I'm driving in my car and I've just driven past Halley Bus Station. Yeah. The youth lying on the floor, not moving. His sock was off, and that was a bit further down the pavement. Oh, right, okay. His eyes were closed. But you may be drunk, but you know. No, that's fine. You just found the bloke lying on the floor. I'll be honest with you, I think he's passed away. You do? Okay, bear with me just a second. And what's leading you to think that, my love? He's motionless. Is he cold? Is he grey? Does he look blue? He looks blue, yeah. He looks blue. Ambulance service, the patient breathing. Yeah, um, I don't know, my, my little baby, I don't know what's happening. Are they breathing? She's breathing hard. She finds it got to breathe, please. I need help. I need breathe. help. 
I need help. It is finding it difficult to breathe. They are conscious, are they? They're awake. Oh, yeah, please. Oh, what do I do? Oh, oh, my. In Stoke, Helen and Julie are still with their first patient. Come and get on here. Keep going for me, lovely. Oh, no, no. Never mind. Come on. Just... Oh. Oh, Don't swear, please. The hostel is unable to provide a bed for the night. With their help, Helen is calling round to find an alternative. I really, really don't want you to go till Helen comes out. No. Helen's working really hard just to try and get somewhere for you tonight. It's not going to be very warm outside tonight, mate. By all means, you can have a blanket, but just wait till Helen comes out. OK, j just... Hey. Hmm? Mm. I'm not going to stay, is he? Sorry, sweetheart. He's sort of saying, mm. blanket, and I'll go. So he's just walked round the corner. OK. How, do, how does it feel when you don't know where your kid is at, at night? Not easy. You just have to hope that they come across somebody that, they'll, that will try and look after them. That's why when I see that teenager, that child in need, they are somebody else's son. And for all I know, that mum is sitting in her, her house wondering why her boy's not talking to her and wondering where the hell he is and wondering where he sleeps at night. You have to keep on hoping. I have to keep on hoping. We'll see him later. Probably. Probably. All right, let me... OK. Know. OK. We'll let, uh, let Control know what's going on. Four nine, drop a patient update, please. Yeah, four nine. Uh, the patient left the scene. He hasn't returned. We have made contact with the emergency duty team. He was in police custody today when he should have, in fact, been picking up a key for a new flat that he's refused to go to. He doesn't like the area that it's in. So, basically, this young man is bouncing around from one service to another today. Um, but he's making the choice to stay out on the street at this moment in time. The emergency duty team have been made aware that that's what he's doing. But currently, we haven't been able to get this young man in anywhere for the night. Hey, Roger, that's all interested. Thank you. He's just a kid, and he thinks he can tough it out out here. And really, he can't, because there's some right nasty pieces out here. Yeah. And we're not in the middle of Manchester or London or Liverpool. But this is bad enough. There's only so much help you can give somebody who doesn't want to be helped. Yeah. So there we go. Playing detective again. I know. Yeah. Cagney and Lacey. Do you remember that? <laughs> you can bet I'm the one with the dark hair, though, can't you? Hi, <laughs> right, Julie. Hi, <laughs> Julie. Just like stick to jobs that they give us now. <laughs> Three hours into their shift, 
Helen and Julie are at last on the way to their second job. Across the region, the number of calls coming in has dipped. There are 24 ambulances currently available for dispatch. Oh, no. Stop it. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> Let's get together and feed all rats. One love. One heart. Let's get together and Feel alright. <laughs> <laughs> the children crying. Oh my God! <laughs> Where did and I come from? Feel alright. <laughs> Let's get together and feel alright. I'm still on tag there, Lucy. <laughs> What was the one with um, her at Darling Buds and May? The two. Um, Don't. <laughs> Do not. Do not mention what? Rosemary and Time. <laughs> we are not Rosemary. We are not Pam Ferris and What's Her Face out of The Good Life. No, I'm not oh. having that. Because you oh. know who I'll be? <laughs> the one that played Mrs. Trunchbull in Matilda. No. All right, Cagney and Lacey it is then. As the pubs and bars empty, the 999 calls begin to pour in. Ambulance service is the patient breathing. She's been stabbed. She's been stabbed. Is she conscious? She's yeah, she's conscious, I think, so, but, but I don't know. You know what I mean? Okay, can you go back yeah. inside the house and check for me? No, I don't know, man. I'm not, I, I don't care. Let's send the ambulance here. I don't want nothing to do with it. I don't think he knows he's bleeding. He knows he's bleeding. And how much have you had to drink? About um, 11 pounds. Do you think you're intoxicated? Yeah. OK. What's the reason for the call? The email um, is stating she has had lots of drinks and she's taken MDMA and had cannabis and she's tried to kill herself. OK. <laughs> Four nine, thank you. Nines, please. Junction of Leak Road and Glebe Street. Coming through as a suicide. Call is coming through from the police, have I? Yeah, we're mobile. Just wondered if there's any more details as into how suicide possibly. The call's still in progress. Um, I'll update you over. Yeah, we'll make the area, my lovely. Thank you for that. Thank you. Okay, it's one of those nights, lovely. Mm. I don't want to get too close. I'm just thinking it? more of we're a not far away silent. Looking, are we? I know we're not that far away. Not a silent approach, silent maybe. Approach, yeah. People feel more vulnerable at night. If you're in pain, or if you're scared, or if you're depressed, or if you're lonely, nights seem to last forever, don't they? It looks like our female anyway, yeah, possibly, yeah, so... Oh. Hello. Hello. Okay. Hi. Are you going to come and have come a on. seat on the ambulance with us? What's been happening tonight, my darling? You don't know? OK. How long have you been wandering around? Mm -hmm. Hours. OK, Is that where... a gentleman not with you? No, I think yeah, he's just yeah. a oh, oh, right. OK. okay. So you're going to tell us what's happened? Just doing stupid things again. So where do you live? Where's your home address? Manchester. I thought I might have had some family here. Ooh. Oh. Have you? OK. I could just be me being paranoid, I don't know. OK. You're on any medication at the moment? I think I've got some antidepressants, but... OK. Have you been taking them? No. I don't know. I've got my children, but... 
Where are your children what? at the moment? Mm. Your mum? Is your mum guardian? Is your mum in charge of your children? Yeah. Okay. You had any drugs today? That's what you make from cannabis and alcohol. Okay. Are we able to just check you over? Is that all right? Do some observations and take some details off. Is that all right to start with? Then we'll cook up a plan A between mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Is that all right? OK, have you got anything in your handbag? Have you got a card or anything that would have your name on? Do you mind if I just have a look through this bag? Because it might just give us some more... Is that all right? Are you sure? OK, what you got in here, sweetie? Okay, so uh, okay we've got something here. Oh, here we go. We've got a got an address. Is that where you live? Uh, okay. You're travelling light, aren't you? Have you lost your purse? Okay. That's what I wonder. Can I ask you a question? I mean, we're not detectives. We like to think we are, but we're not, OK? <laughs> right, this is dated the 5th, which is a couple of days ago, OK? And what bit I know about things, this is more or less saying that somebody was come, going to come round to your house to take a stock check. Does that indicate you're in debt? Have you had the bailiffs round? Mm. Yeah. And in red letters it says, do not ignore. Mm. So have you just mm. couldn't mm. face it and... Mm. OK, my darling. OK. I mean, obviously, sweetheart, we can't sort of just check you over and let you go on your merry way, cos we don't know where that merry way is. We don't know where you've come from, really. Mm. We need to go up to the hospital. Yeah. Let's put this other blanket round your sweetheart. OK. OK, Koki, lean back for me. Let's get you all snug as a bug. OK. Sometimes we try our best and our best ain't good enough, is it? And maybe your mum is a little bit disappointed and maybe, maybe your children are, but we've got to concentrate on you, will not you? Facing your problems, cos they ain't going to go away, darling, are they? Not going to go away, are they? OK. OK, let's get the ball rolling. Ready when you are. Thank you, Helen. You've been on the drugs since school? Yeah. OK, that's a long time to live with a demon, isn't it? Have you ever had a detox? Have you ever been any...? Never. I, I tried years ago, but we weren't funded for it then. OK. And unfortunately, a lot of this comes down to pennies, doesn't it? Yeah. There you are, sweetie. Have a clean tissue. You can literally go through a whole rotation for 14, 15 shifts and not feel like you've achieved anything. That, that's that's quite heavy. Right, we'll get the ball rolling. You've been really, really strong. OK, this is the first first part of getting things sorted. OK, take your blankets with you, my lovely. But eventually, something will come good. Great stuff. And you will just get that one job where you've safety netted them. Like a little Eskimo under there. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a positive outcome, knowing that you've made that difference. Nobody's here to judge you. Everybody's here to help you, OK? And whatever they offer you, you take it. Get the ball rolling. OK, sweetie? Take care. OK, all right. See you, my lovely. OK, cheers. Oh. 
Wow. Oh, complicated lady. Very, very complicated. Mental health is a massive issue, isn't it, these days? They're so vulnerable, aren't they? Mm. Yeah. OK. Quarter to four. Yeah. Such a shame, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Home again. Home again. One day I know I feel home again. Oh my gosh. Our control room and staff have responded. Ambulances to a very serious 999 call earlier, a hanging, only for our staff to arrive on scene and to find it was a hoax. That's bad, isn't it? What do you think, Dave? Dave is disgusted. <laughs> All this talk will make you fool. So I'll close my Look behind, moving on, moving on. So I'll my It's not all about flying around on lights and sirens, rushing people into hospital because they're desperately ill. All some people need is a total stranger to sit and listen to them, which is what we do quite a lot of the time. Right, let's go inside. Oh, we're going in. Yeah, come on. Get a job now. Yeah, you watch. I'll give it three seconds. <clears throat> Many times I've been told. Speaking my just people. So I close my Look behind, moving on, moving on. So I close my eyes. Look behind, moving on. Next on Ambulance. Oh, Rich. Now he's back on again. I've never been to him. You've never been to him? No. I think you're the only person that hasn't met him. It's going to give me nightmares, this bloke is. He's ringing every single day.